we're in a position where we can we can affect change and uh I'm I'm definitely going to always take this opportunity as as head coach of a club to to really affect people's lives. The football will happen if it happens. Welcome to Stories of Strength, a podcast by Juventus to kick off the mental health stigma. My name is Katie Morton. I'm a licensed therapist. And today we're going to talk about the unique relationship between a coach and an athlete. And I have the pleasure of speaking with the wonderful and amazing and incredibly talented Joe Montemuro. So for our audience, if they aren't aware, how did you get to where you are now? We could say you, this is like the pinnacle, the best. Look, I suppose uh, like everything, you know, nothing nothing arrives uh, with uh, with just the, the magic wand. It's it's hard work. It's uh, it's sacrifice, and uh, and I suppose just a drive. So um, you know, I grew up in a in a in an environment where where football wasn't uh, or soccer wasn't uh, the number one sport. So it, it, the the opportunities were very limited. Um, so you you had to make your own way. You had to design your own sort of process of of going forward. And um, look, I've just been privileged enough to have uh, just done the right things along that course. And uh, lo and behold, I'm at a I'm at a club that uh, you know I supported as a as a as a as a boy. And um, and uh, you know it's an amazing privilege to be here. So so like everything, just uh, hard work. Uh, you know, taking the opportunities and uh, and lots of sacrifice. Yeah, definitely. I would assume a lot of sacrifice because you're all the way from Melbourne to <laughs> to Torino, Italy. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, there were a lot of lot of challenges along the way. I mean, um, you know, even going from uh, from Australia to uh, to the UK uh, to the Arsenal job. You know, I was away from my family for three years. You know, we were sort of uh, sort of uh, bits and pieces of seeing each other and so on and so on. So uh, that was a challenge alone. So look, it brings all the challenges that that you 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 um, that that comes with you know, being at, at this level. But, um, you know, like I always say, we're, we're very privileged to be at this level. We're very privileged to be in, in this position. I feel uh, amazingly privileged to, to be here, you know, talking about uh, something we love in, uh, in, in environments that, uh, that are, you know, really doing some amazing things for, for the game. Yeah, and we're privileged to have you. So on the topic of the relationship between coach and um, athlete, how do you think that is a unique relationship, different from others that you've had? Look, I think you use a, you use the perfect word. It is unique because uh, each each player has their own, uh, um, you know, triggers, has their own context, and I think I think that's probably the starting point to understand the context where they've come from, cultural. Um, you know, I'm, uh, it's the, the thing that I find amazing is just working with different cultures. You know, you work with, you know, I've worked with a lot of Dutch players, a lot of English players, now working with a lot of Italian players, so on and so on. And that, and that alone brings its own, its own unique, um, sort of approach from that perspective. So, so I think that's the starting point. The starting point is understanding the context where they've come from. You know, they might have had a, not a good time at their previous club. So there's, there's another rebuilding process that you need to do. But look, I, I, I try to make it, um, I suppose, personable, but more importantly, safe. Um, that's really, really important to me. And, and uh, you know, where they can, they can come to an environment knowing that they can be the best that they can be without being judged, without, being, without bringing the baggage of, uh, of other experiences and, and, and so on. Um, and that's the first and foremost thing. To, to, it, it could be just a simple hello. It could be just a simple smile. It could be just a simple, you know, breaking the ice. You know, I'll find out a little bit about their family. Oh, you know, I hear your brother's involved in so and so and so and so. And they sort of, you know, already the, the athlete um, is triggered by the, by the emotion that I've taken the time to to, to find out who you are, who you're all about. And, and that, and that sort of, for me, is the key. Um, so, so again, making it a safe environment, making, making it a, um, a unique sort of, um, tribe of belonging, if you want to say. So, mm -hmm. um, finding out where they belong in the team and where they can contribute. And, and I think that's probably the most important thing from my perspective. No, I love that, especially because I think most of these players have been playing for a long time. And even as someone who played sports growing up, your team becomes kind of like your family in many ways and you spend so much time together. That's that's really great. I think connections are key, especially when you have t tons of different types of people from different places. Along with that, when we have a bunch of different players from different cultural yeah. backgrounds, different expectations, maybe different egos, how do you manage potential conflicts or conflicts that I'm sure have arisen over the years between two players? Is that something you get actively involved in or... It does depend on the context. There's some things that, you know, um, 
players can sort out themselves. There's, there's things that you sometimes just have to let go and just step back and uh, and uh, and allow it to take its course. But look, if there is conflict, which there always is, you know, whether it's uh, whether it's a disagreement or or or, or just a, a I suppose a, a little bit of tension amongst two players from an ego driven sort of scenario, it can be. Um, I think. The, the honest and best approach is to is to just sit them down and uh, and understand the context what triggers these what triggers these um, I suppose these emotions of conflict or all these emotions and and find out the heart of where it's coming from and look I think the biggest thing and the most important thing is is to make them all understand what what our direction is what we're what we're trying to achieve and this is where creating a, a, a good culture, creating a good football culture, creating a direction of we're all in this trying to achieve the um, the, the the one goal. I think I think is fundamentally important because I think there's a, there's a lot of distractions in modern modern sport. There's a lot of distractions in in modern um, in modern um, uh, athletes, um, and I think bringing them back on course is the, is the biggest thing. And usually that's the best way to to deal with the conflict. Yeah, because I think we're all moving towards the same goal. Let's not let this pull us off. Correct. Base, yeah. Correct. And are they open to communicating clearly and easily or is that like sometimes like pulling teeth? I know sometimes it can be hard to get people to sit down and talk it out. It's always hard. It's always hard, and uh, you know, getting getting the getting the information is is sometimes very very difficult. And it might even be just sitting down one on one with a player initially, and uh, and making them feel safe, and, and when they can talk about something. Um, so it's it's about uh, again, it's about gathering the the, the right context and inf- information to for you to have the ammunition to go in there and say, okay, well, you've said this, you've said that. Is that really taking energy away from what our goal is, what we're trying to achieve? And um, and look, a lot of them. You know, uh, when you speak to them one on one, you know you do break down a lot of barriers. And I think, I think having that uh, that that empathetic sort of nature of of just understanding where they're coming from and 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 being heard. I mean, and again, it just goes back to that that whole creating a safe environment. You know, where they are heard, where they are, where they do feel belong, that they belong, and uh, they do feel that they've got a place that they can come to, and and someone actually cares. Yeah, and you've said a lot about creating that safe environment. Is there anything that you do specifically to create that supportive space where they feel like they can talk to you or come to you with an issue maybe before it erupts into a, con- a straight-up conflict with someone else? Yeah, look, I mean, um, my door's always open. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think uh, if if there's a strength that um, I'd like to say that's really, really important for me is to have a a group of staff or a group of a group of people that are that are empathetic towards understanding that yeah the football is the most important part it is it is a it is a fundamental factor of what we do we represent a great club and so on but in the end we are human beings and we all come from from different different sort of contexts different environments different different uh you know fears and uh and uh and and and, ha- and happy moments and um i think that has to be the first and foremost sort of understanding of of what we do we're in we're in a position where we can we can affect change and uh I'm I'm definitely going to always take this opportunity as as head coach of a club to to really affect people's lives. The football will happen if it happens. I love that. I heard that you were studying psychology to become a better, more. I don't even know what what's the goal of that for you. I think it would make you a better coach, but maybe a better person. You sound very. I mean, I feel like I could talk to you. <laughs> you know, if I can pay you by the hour later, we can. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give you my business card. Um, look. Um, it's a good question. I don't know. I just, uh, I just, um, I love, I love dealing with, with people in this position and, and, and meaning, and what I mean by that is that there's an opportunity for, for real growth because I think we lose sight in, in something which is sport that can really, um, be, be an amazing role model for, for a lot of things, just you know, even just this alone, that we're, we're we're trying to just make people understand what makes people tick, how they think, you know, because they are just people, and uh, and I think for me, the ability to use this forum or use my role, uh, which I'm amazingly privileged and humbled to have, um, to just trigger something and 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 change people's. Um, way of thinking um, and, and, and just bring just general happiness, I think, is, is really, really important. And, and I think just understanding people a little bit better is probably where I want to understand uh, um, 
the, the, the psychology or the psychological part of, of human beings. And, and I think we have to deal with a lot. We have to deal with pressure. We have to deal with mistakes. We have to deal with judgment. We have to deal with, um, you know, everyone's a coach. Everyone's a, uh, a journalist. Everyone's, uh, you know, a sports scientist these days. And, um, you know, you've got to deal with a lot. And, and as I said before, uh, it's not just about the football for these players anymore. It's, I wish they could just focus on the football. There's everything else involved, and I think um, the more we can we can educate, the more we can we can give them the tools to deal with these these things, um, these 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 external factors. I think um, we'll all be better people for it. I agree, especially with all all the distractions in life for all of us in general. You spoke a little bit about like disappointments and you know mistakes. How do you manage that with a player? Because obviously we they're pushed to operate you know 100 percent perfect yeah. every time. How do you deal with the fact that obviously we're human, it doesn't work out that way, and kind of the fallout? Because I know as a recovering perfectionist that when things don't go right, it's really hard, and I'm my worst enemy, and I'll beat myself up. You're, and, not, a, you're not a Virgo, are you? And, no, no, I'm a no, Libra, no. thank okay, God. That would be like I'm a Virgo, and we're, oh. we're, we're nuts. We're mad. We're mad. <laughs> we're mad. So how do you deal with that? How do you coach somebody maybe out of that downward spiral? I think the first thing to do is is one of the first things I, I try to do when I when I take over a team or, or even in a first uh, um, uh, even discussion with the group is is admit that I make mistakes too. So I lead by example that, yeah, you know, I got it wrong tactically. We lost because I got it wrong tactically. I'll put my hand up. And that seems to break down a lot of, a lot of walls and a lot of barriers that, you know what, if the coach is a human being, he can make mistakes. I'm not going to... You know, um, well, then they don't feel like they have to take there. full blame. Well, right? exactly. It's all it, well, on me. Well, exactly, exactly. And yeah, there might be there might be the blame. You made a mistake. They cop the goal. We lost the game. Yeah, that happens. You know, mm -hmm. the human beings. You know, and and we're going to make mistakes. We're going to we're going to all make errors. And I, and I think the biggest thing for me is to is to take responsibility. And and I I'm the first one to do it. I'll always do it with my teams. I'll be the first one to say, hey, okay, we got that wrong. Training wasn't good. Got it wrong. Designed it, designed it wrong. Let's get it right next time. Or, and this is what we need to do. And then what happens? It it tends to become a bit of a um, a building block scenario where we're all involved in in making it better. Because I'm I'm at your level. I'm the same. I'll make mistakes. Is it done on purpose? Yeah, it is done on purpose. But it does break down those barriers. And um, you know, uh, I, I think it's like everything. You know, we 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 sort of. You know, we're judged quite a lot in this in this industry and and I'm trying to make the players really understand and we use one word in, in our group and it's called selflessness. You know, what can I do for you and not ask for anything back? Or what can I do for the team and not ask for anything back that, you know, because I've done something for you and it's it sort of comes back to that judgment sort of scenario, you know, what you know, judged by by what you can do for your tribe, not by the money you've got or the goal you scored or anything like that. Judge what you've done for your team. And uh, we try to have that as a, as a base of our culture. And I love that the the taking responsibility, it's almost like an argument. I mean, as a therapist, I'm always coaching people to, you can say sorry first. It doesn't mean you're it's powerless. Okay. It's okay. It actually opens it up for more conversation. Yeah. It allows yeah. for, because I think, especially in sports, we can feel like, well, I missed that one goal. I missed that one corner kick. I messed this up, blah, blah, blah. But it's the whole game. It's the whole team from start to finish. To put the blame on one person feels very heavy. Yeah, look, um, and and it's normal. It's normal to take responsibility. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, uh, we've seen many, many scenarios in sport that that's, uh, that's uh, you know, uh, quite a normal thing that you, you, you take the blame, you take the responsibility from that perspective. But, but the reality is, is that you have to be create that, that environment where, okay, you've made a mistake, it's happened, how can, we, how can we make sure it doesn't happen again or make sure that we limit that opportunity and, uh, and we move on. But not isolating people, the important thing is, is, that, is that everyone's everyone's behind that scenario, everyone's working within the tribe to, to go forward. Yeah, I agree. And it, it helps, it's a team, right? It's not just one person totally. on their own. Totally. So if you could go back in time, maybe 20, 30 years ago, maybe farther back, what advice would you give to a younger you or or another coach who's just starting out because mistakes, I'm sure we've, I mean, I've made mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. What would you tell them? Be you. Your players want to see you. They don't want to see a copy of someone else. They don't want to be, a, they don't want to see a copy of another coach. 
um, believe in what you believe in, um, but also have the have the wisdom and the and I think the the energy to to listen and and also to to engage with the people around you because the people around you will teach you more than probably what coaching books do or or watching uh, you know another coach work. So so I think the quicker you can be you and believe in what you believe in and being able and able to get that message across simply and and effectively I think that's probably the the, the biggest advice I can I can give. I see a lot of coaches that are are mimics of other other people but I think your group, your team wants to see you. They want to see, they love your personality and they want your personality to shine. We've talked a lot about conflict and difficulty between players and maybe even between your staff. Are there particular factors you think play a role in creating that, those types of issues? I think there's two major things. I think um, when players are, are, um, are reluctant to probably talk about external things that are happening, they're keeping it within themselves. You can see that it takes a lot of energy from their core job. So if there's something happening at home or there's something happening externally, um, uh, a lot of players have a tendency to keep that in and you can see that performance or even mm -hmm. even relationships do go down. Um, and I think um, I've seen and I've been, I've been part of it, not as a head coach, but um, having a, a very um, um, un- I suppose, uh, autonomous or unempathetic coaching staff. And what I mean by that being it being very structured and, and very restrictive coaches or staff members not having the opportunity for them to be, to make it the best environment for their scenario, not, not being felt or heard as part of the group. So they're two major factors that I've, I've witnessed, um, and I've experienced and, um, um, I can say as a head coach, the, the first thing that I do with all my staff is get them down one by one and I just say, you as the goalkeeper coach, you have to make it the best goalkeeping program in the world. Make it happen. I'll support you, whatever it is. Then that's the base. And straight away you walk away knowing that, okay, well, this this guy's going to listen to me. So already the the level of, of working is higher, meaning that they'll go and do extra work come back to you and, and we'll, we'll discuss it. Um, but the biggest one I think is, is when players have external factors happening and they, and they allow it to affect their performance and they don't feel that they have a, a good place or have a safe place, as I keep on saying, for mm -hmm. them, uh, for them to be able to, to, to try to, to try to work out what's happening or, or get the opportunity to refocus them back on football. Well, yeah, because I think, like you said, there's so many factors outside that can distract us. And if we're not doing well mentally from something else, let's say we got in a fight with a girlfriend or boyfriend or whomever, then we come into work, yeah. right? And we're yeah. not able to focus and we, mm. we can't do it, you know? It's it's a difficult one. And I think that's that's probably an education um, that, that needs to be sort of, uh, I, I suppose, brought basically as an athlete. An athlete education, you know, whether it's done in academies when they're growing up, whether it's something that clubs do externally, just the ability to deal with external pressure, external external scenarios, which could which could lead to um, you know problems within the relationship of the group of the, of the playing group. So um, and, and and players deal with it all different ways, and that's why you know context is so important. Understanding where they've come from, you know, some of them probably come from different socio-economic backgrounds, which has made it difficult, and they deal with things differently. Um, some of them come from, you know, uh, elite backgrounds that they've been the best, they've been the best, and and all of a sudden now mm -hmm. you're in a group where you're not the best anymore. So. So context is huge. Understanding where they've come from, I think, is 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 the way um, to to really deal with a player relationship, but b also creating the scenario for players to feel heard and feel welcomed and feel understood because you've taken the time to understand where they've come from or their background. And I think that's really important. No, I agree. I think that is really important because everybody's different, right? And some people might compartmentalize better sure. than others sure. or suppress. Yeah. And there's got to be a balance because it's not like, you know, going to a football match is a time for you to express everything that's coming up for you. That's yeah. not therapy. No. But we also can't have it be a no emotion zone 
get out there like a robot and do your job. That doesn't work either. Well, you you know you, you the, the the problem the problem is is this is this whole judgment because you're judged on on 95 minutes on the weekend of what you've done during the week, how you've been, you've probably trained well, you've done everything right, you've had a great week, everything like that. Then all of a sudden that 90 minutes, you know you lose one nil, you've made the mistake and then all, you know, it's, 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 you know, hell for leather mm -hmm. sort of thing. So, <laughs> so, you know, I, I mean, um, how do, how do we manage that? So from a coaching perspective, I can't look at it from a, from a macro perspective of that 95 minutes. I need to look at the whole program itself and where it's going and where it's leading. And, and, and as, and, and, and from my perspective, you know, um, we try to stay away from, obviously, you know, winning and losing games is is what we're here for, but we try to stay away from these short-term sort of, I think, a little bit naive goals that we try to set ourselves. I try to set long-term goals in terms of development as a footballer. What do we want to achieve mm -hmm. as a person? Where do we want to go as a group? Um, set goals as a, as a team on you know on certain stats that are really really important to us that that people don't see you know because if we if we if we if we're beholden to you know the fan on the Sunday that's just seen the score and we've lost one nil and it's sort of you know sack the coach or sack that player <laughs> yeah well, that, you know it is that well, and, people and, talk and, that and, way. And, and people talk that way and people take it on on board you know and uh, and and it is what it is we have to accept it we have to have to accept criticism in my in my role. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's setting, it's setting long-term goals and, 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 and I think having the resilience to, to stick to these long-term goals is, is a key factor. Yeah, I agree. And it's probably part of the key to your success. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, I'm just winging it. I don't know. Uh, you know, um, but, um. We all wing it a little bit. We, we wing it a little bit and I think it's good. I think it's good. You know, um, you know, the question will be asked about, uh, you know, advice and so on, and and I think some of some of the some of the biggest advice and the biggest thing is is to be brave. You know, be brave and be be courageous and and put yourself out there. And if you know, there's never a stupid comment. There's never a stupid comment. Just say it. You know, and uh, and I think um, you know they're fundamental things. Where, but again, it goes back to that. You know, having the ability in a safe place to be able to say something silly. You know, and uh, and and it, and it leads somewhere. Agreed. I think it gives true connection to your team, which. I think in turn would make them not only play better together, but also play harder. I agree. I agree. And, um, you know, it's, it's making the, the high achiever, the talented, the one that's come with the big reputation, realize that without the other 10 players, you don't achieve much. You don't achieve much. So the need and the want to be, you know, part of, part of this selfless group um, and to be, and 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 not and not be singled out that you're, you know, you're you're exempt to certain things on the pitch because you are who you are. You know, we're all we all have to contribute. And I think that's the key. That's the magic. You know, that's that's uh, that's um, where I think everyone loves doing something good for someone. You know, um, and and if you can get to that point, you've got you've got a team. Yeah, I agree. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. It's really interesting to hear your perspective and get a greater understanding of why you do what you do in your job. And it's more closer to my job than I thought it might have been. It's very close. You probably uh, the problem is the football. The football stuff sort of <laughs> becomes little... becomes secondary. You know the amount of managing. You know, well, we, you know, we spent we we probably spend less time less time on the pitch than uh, than we do together. You know, in in whether it's video analysis or or together traveling and so on and so on. So we're, we're together quite a lot. So you've got to really manage the, um, the, the, the non on pitch football stuff, you know, it's, it's yeah. so important, you know, and, uh, you know, injured players, players not playing, players that are left out, players that are out of form, you yeah. know, context outside of, outside of the game. Um, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of things to manage and, um, so, but, uh, I love it. Yeah. It sounds like you're doing it wonderfully. Thank you. Thanks again for taking the time to speak with us. It's been really enlightening. Pleasure. And thank each and every one of you for watching and listening and make sure you follow along so you get to hear all of our stories of strength.